European stocks give up early gains. Hello and welcome to the Daily FX European Market Report. I'm Jeremy Naylor. At the moment, this is how things look on the European markets as things begin to heat up in France ahead of the first round of the French elections on Sunday. Despite earlier gains in London and Germany, we've now got a negative swing to the markets, but only by a small margin, bearing in mind the big losses we've seen over the last couple of days here in London, so we're consolidating at these recent new low levels. France 40 cash, yes, it's strong, but not as strong as it was earlier. Now, food producers have been of interest today. There's evidence that food deflation that's been seen in Europe may be over. Anglo-Dutch household products and food conglomerate Unilever and Swiss food giant Nestle both beat earnings estimates as they each reported that while there was evidence of slowing consumption, price increases were helping the bottom line. It comes after years of price deflation in the European food industry. Let's take a look at the charts to see uh, where things stand at the moment. I want to go first of all uh, with this chart uh, for Unilever. Going into today's numbers, we've seen a couple of days of declines. Uh, this is the rise of uh, now one and a quarter percent for Unilever. We're just off the highs today. Uh, but broadly speaking, this is a stock that's benefited recently. It had that what was an unwanted offer from the US food giant Kraft at the back end of February. But since then, there has has been this uh, uh, holding on to the gains that we've seen in the stock of Unilever. Just take a quick look at Nestle, uh, a little bit of a different picture. The stock is up today, but only by a very small margin of a third of 1%. Uh, but you can see the recovery that's been underway since the beginning of December last year as it became obvious uh, that the company was beginning to see some sort of traction uh, within its pricing structures, which it was char charging uh, these consumers. And that now seems to be sticking. Elsewhere, London-listed Man Group, this is the world's largest publicly traded hedge fund, has reported that while other hedge funds find they're going tough, it's seen assets under management climb to a record during the first quarter. It published earnings this morning as well. Investors seem to be betting that volatility will increase. It saw net inflows of $3 billion uh, during the first quarter, the highest since the second three months of 2011. Interestingly, though, investors are allocating capital to Broadly speaking, the long-only funds uh, within the family of uh, business that's being offered by Man Group. Assets under management rising to a record 88.7 billion US dollars, up from 80.9 billion as at the end of December. Meanwhile, there's been a lot of interest in oil prices in Europe this morning after yesterday's big declines. Technically, it seems that there may yet still be more losses to come. Let's look uh, first of all at uh, the, the daily chart to show you where we are in terms of the move that we saw, the big move down that we saw. And in fact, we were off the highs of 53.96 uh, just a matter of a week or so ago. Here we are now at 51.03. That's the daily chart. I want to show you this uh, four hourly chart to explain a little bit more about my thinking here uh, on what's happening. Uh, going into the slide yesterday, this um, now we know is, is the beginning of what looked like a flagpole uh, for this inverted flag. And the flag is beginning to build here. You can see that we're still trading, technically we're still trading within the flag, so it hasn't yet popped out the bottom. But on technical analysis, when you get this, this is a continuation pattern and expected to see a continuation of that. The measurement, the way to measure that is to measure the flagpole in to the flag, take the length of that, bring it down here and WAPO, here we have a price now of 43.34 potentially uh, for US crude. This is US crude, not Brent, but whichever way you cut it, looking as though we could well see a further continuation of this decline that we've seen. That will take it uh, to below uh, $50 uh, a barrel and that, if it does come to pass, would be the lowest for uh, US crude since the 29th of March. So potentially could we see uh, more losses to come? And don't forget after the close of a US uh, trade, sorry, European trade tomorrow uh, during the US session, we get the Baker Hughes oil rig count. And if we see another increase in the number of rigs being employed, uh, that could well see a further leg lower for the uh, price of oil as more oil potentially comes onto the market. Uh, if it does increase again tomorrow, that will be the 14th straight week, straight week of gains that we've seen arise in the oil rig count in the States. And finally, let's look at uh, what will be on the agenda for European trade tomorrow, Friday 21st of April, which incidentally is Queen Elizabeth's 91st birthday. Uh, but European earnings uh, kick off tomorrow. They're far and few between just household products company Reckitt Benckiser uh, on first quarter interim management statement. That's the only one of any uh, substance here in the European markets to watch out for first thing tomorrow. And then as we wind the clock forward to the US, it's General Electric, Honeywell and Schlumberger all coming within European trade. So we'll be of interest to see where those stocks 
stocks come through in terms of the earnings number. And on the economy, we get manufacturing PMI data out in Japan, Germany, France, the Eurozone, and later on in the day, the US economy. And that's a look at what we've got in terms of what's to come tomorrow. Let's just leave you now with a look at where we are with the European markets. I'll be back tomorrow with an update on the Daily FX European Market Report.